In this video, I'd like to talk about the positive and negative intervals of functions. And before we look at this specific example, let's first consider the definitions. So let's start with a positive interval. And these definitions are fairly simple. The basic idea to have a positive interval, these are the x values for which our function y equals g of x or whatever it is, for this case it is g of x, but it could be any function. But this is when the function is bigger than zero. So we're looking for positive y values. And if the y values are positive, then we would call that a positive interval. And we'll look at specifically which x values this occurs on. Now in contrast to this, you might be able to guess a negative interval is when our function is negative, when the y value for whatever our function is, is less than zero. And again, we're talking about which x values, which range of x values or interval of x values would have this y value less than zero. So with these definitions in mind, let's take a look at the example problems. And for this one, we just need to select the interval where g is positive. And for these exercises on the Khan Academy, you're gonna have multiple choice, since a lot of times it's difficult to determine exactly where the cutoff is, but we can talk more generally about it. So this is our cutoff point. This is when the y value, notice, is zero. So let me mark that in. This is when y is zero. So any point above it, any point on the blue curve that has a higher y value of this, this would be part of our positive interval. Whereas any point, any x value that has a y value less than this point, that will be part of our negative interval. So over here, this is our negative interval. So our positive interval we can say starts at an x value, it looks around minus five here, at least that's all we know. So we can say it's positive when x is at least negative five and goes all the way to this x value here, which let's just approximate it. Let's say that x is approximately maybe 2.4, 2.3, somewhere in there, give or take a little bit. And it's positive all the way up to this point. Now at this point, it's equal to zero, and so maybe we can call that the zero interval, but it's positive up to that point, so we won't put the equal sign, and it goes to 2.4. And again, that's a very rough approximation. It's hard to tell exactly what that x value is. And on the other side, we're looking at our negative interval here, and so that starts at this 2.4, and our x value will then go to at least negative five here, or positive five, I should say. So any x values in this interval here will give us a positive y value, and any x value in this interval will give us a negative y value. So with this in mind, you don't need to do this for every problem, but we wanna first look at it broadly and then actually go and answer the specific questions. So for us, we wanna know when is our function g positive or what interval? And you can see this first answer here, when x is between one and two, that is part of our positive interval. So that's correct. But let's just look at the other ones just to confirm that these are wrong answers. So when x is between three and four, notice that's here and here, that is part of our negative interval. Our y value is negative there, so it can't be that. And when x is between four and five, so that's here and here, and again, you can see the y value is negative. In fact, it's even more negative than it was on this interval. So that's not correct as well, which lets us feel more confident that this first choice is correct. So with this in mind, let's look at some different example problems. They're all gonna be fairly similar. So this one, we wanna select the interval where h is negative. So that essentially is when our curve is below the x-axis. Because remember, this x-axis, this is when y is equal to zero. It's 
all along this x-axis that we have our borderline here. So anything below that is part of our negative interval. So let's find where it crosses at y equals 0, or essentially these x-intercepts here. And our negative interval starts at negative 2. Then notice the y value is negative through all of this. And it goes all the way to 3 before the y value becomes positive. So the interval is positive from 3 onwards and positive when the x value is less than negative 2. But between negative 2 and 3, and actually let's not include negative 2 as our endpoint since that's when it's equal to 0 rather than being negative. So it's between negative 2 and positive 3. This is our negative interval here. So going to our answer choices, so for this first one, A, when x is between minus 4 and minus 3, so that's here and here, notice we're dealing with all positive numbers. So it's not that one. When x is between minus 1 and 1, so that's here and here. These are all negative values, and so that's the correct choice. So B is the answer we're looking for, but it's always a good habit to check all your multiple choice answers if you have time just to double check your work. And from three to four, not including three, so that's going from here to here roughly, this is all positive. So that would not be correct as well, which helps us feel confident that choice B was correct. Let's do another one. So this one looks like a trig function and with this wavy function here, we need to know when the interval is positive for our function f of x. And so let's just consider when we're talking about the curve above the x-axis. Because again, remember that this x-axis, this is when y is equal to zero. So we're looking at when it's above that x-axis. So up here it's positive, down here and down here it's negative though it also looks to be positive for a little bit up there and positive for a little bit up there. So there's three different parts that are positive since in each of those intervals, the y value is positive. Now, going to our answer choices, let's just go through each of these. From minus 4 to minus 2, so that's from here to here, and it looks like in that entire interval, the function is negative. So it's not going to be that one from minus one to one. So that's from here to here. And in that interval, the y value is always positive. So that looks to be our answer. And just to double check with the last one, from two to four, we're looking at from here to here. But in this interval, as we'd expect, it's all negative for the y values. So that one is not correct, which justifies that choice B is the correct answer here.